Okay, so um, welcome to the Team on the Run call regarding Facebook and how to make Facebook work for us in our business. Now, I see a couple of people on here who should probably be leading this call. Jess and Carla, you probably legit don't even need to be on this call because you know what you're doing when it comes to Facebook. Yes, I am not going to tell you anything that you don't already know, okay? Um, so first of all, just let's be aware of that, that um, there are people on this call who are already very social media savvy. And Facebook, when I started Beachbody Coaching, um, Facebook was kind of king, right? Kind of queen of social media. And now really things have moved on to um, Instagram. And I'm really trying to dig in and learn Instagram. So be sure that you hop on Amanda's 6.30 a.m. call, by the way, if you want to learn more about Instagram, because I know I will be there. So really and truly, it was a couple different people. Hi, cutie. Yeah. Okay, go get it really quick. There um, are a couple people who are like, what I could really use is training on Facebook. And I have to remember sometimes that I've been in this business for almost six years. And when I started, um, Facebook, like I said, was king. And um, I felt like this is just stuff that everybody knew. But everybody doesn't necessarily know this, especially if you haven't been using Facebook for a business purpose. When I first started, I had like 200 friends on Facebook. And it was mostly via, um, you know, through my, it was just like people I graduated high school with and I want to, are you drinking Energize out of your container? I love it, Carla. Um, it was just like people I went to high school with. I wanted to see what people are up to with their, you know, kids. I was not using it for a business platform. So to transition to that was really awkward for me. Um, and so these are some tips that I've put together, but literally I'm, I know I'm maybe being too humble about this, but some of you who are on here who are seasoned coaches who started when Facebook was king, you know all this stuff. But I suppose refreshers are always good, but I might also put you on the spot. So I put together a little slideshow. What Ideally, what I wanted to do is have these really amazing examples of things to use. So like Jess Spiegeland and Carla and Alyssa Gibson. I don't think she's on. Oh, she is on here. I see her. I had actually like screen captured some stuff of yours to share. And so, um, but I didn't have time today. I have a sick kid. And so it has just been kind of a crazy day. So what I'll probably do is put together some examples that I'll post in the comments under the recording for you guys. But um, so this is just like bulleted, bulleted slides. Um, but you can see I used to be a teacher. So I love the bulleted slides. I'm a very visual person. So I was really hoping to have some visual aids to go along with those. But you got to do what you got to do real life, right? So I'm going to share my screen. And hopefully, I don't have like a bazillion typos and you know, things like that for you to see. Um, let me get into my, we don't need Rockstar Team Spirit. Okay. So uh, really please feel free at any point to like holler at me and ask questions. I don't wanna, no, sorry, stop. I want to share them. Why am I so slow? Because I'm sleep deprived. All right, I just want to show my presentation. Guys, why? Why am I delirious? View, present. Okay. All right, so this is just mastering Facebook. I would not say I'm a Facebook master, okay? Please. But I would say that I have built a very successful business using my personal Facebook profile as my main source of, of marketing myself and reaching other people. Have I since branched out with a business uh, Facebook page? Yes. Have I since reached out with my, with my Instagram? Yes. But that really only came after mastering Facebook first and foremost. Now, like I said, times are changing. Instagram is kind of the big dog now. So, um, you know, keep that in mind that the social media savvy is not necessarily going to be limited to Facebook anymore. But this is definitely a platform that you should feel really comfortable on because a lot of the time you're going to be um, funneling people from Instagram over here because it's a lot easier to communicate with them. Yeah, buddy. 
You're hot. I don't, I can't do anything about it being hot. Okay. All right. Take off your shirt. You can grab some ice water or something. Sorry. This is my life at eight o'clock. I know you get it. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about is your first impression that you make on people. Now we're going to get into this, but it's really, really important for you with Facebook to be friending people and adding people to your network all the time, right? Yes or yes? Yes. So you want your first impression when they see your friend request to be one that is um, appealing and not spammy or creepy or mlm -y. And again, a lot of you guys know this. So I know some of this sounds really basic, but sometimes we need the reminder. Okay. Have a well-lit, nice-looking profile picture of your face please. Not your dog, not your baby, not a motivational quote. Because you, when you're friend requesting, you know, Joe Schmo from class of 1999, you don't, they're not going to recognize you by seeing a picture of your dog. Okay. So um, yeah, get your face preferably smiling. It would be great. Something that's close up, something that's well lit. It doesn't have to be professional. Professional would be great. Um, but even if you have like a picture of your whole family, that can be really, really hard for, for them to see who you are. Um, so I really want you to look, is my first impression on my Facebook profile appealing? Please take Beachbody off your profile. I don't want to see it anywhere on there. Why? Let me tell you why. Is it because you should be ashamed of being a Beachbody coach? Absolutely not. This is a fantastic, fantastic job. Um, but what's going to happen is you look MLM-y. So when, for example, when someone requests me, um, I see the friend request and I see the smiling picture of them because I know who it is. It's not a picture of their dog, right? But then I see right under their picture, it works global. And guess what I do? Denied. I do not want to be friends with you. I do not want you to send, sell me your wrap, your pill, your caffeine patch, your candles, your whatever it is, your lash boost, your I don't, I'm not interested. And so if people see you right away, beach body as your occupation, they're like, yeah, denied. So that is not, beach body is not you. You are your brand. So please take it off your op occupations. Uh, it is definitely okay if you've got a business like page to link. Um, when you go into occupations, you can like start typing the name of your business like page. So for me, it would be Jessica Kennedy, Mom on the Run, and it types up like a tag, okay? So I want those two pages to be linked together, personal page to business page, business page to like page. You can put your Instagram account. You can link all those things together, but what you don't want it to say is employed by Beachbody because it just makes you look creepy and mlm -y, and then people don't want to accept your friend request, okay? Please use your real name. And I know I might be great to get on some people's nerves. And I know people are going to be like, I don't want to be searchable by my students. I don't want to be searchable by my ex-boyfriend. I don't want to be, so well, you know what? If you become a top 15, you know, 15 star coach, Melissa McAllister is not up on stage as Melissa, Melissa Marie. Okay. She's not up on stage as Melissa feels so good McAllister or whatever bizarre oh name you know what I'm talking about I see just laughing but you know what I'm talking about those people who are like Melissa the queen McAllister or like they just drop all together their last name and it's their middle name I get not wanting to be searchable by people but really if you want to go places in this business you need to be searchable by people right you are your brand so please use your real name the whole thing um, I think the only time I've ever thought that was maybe an exception to the rule was I had, uh, we have a coach on our team who works with, um, juvenile delinquents and like corrections. Okay. So I can understand her not wanting to use her full name, but for the most part, you want to start branding yourself with your name from day one, because you want to be picturing that up on screen at Summit when you are recognized with all your accolades. Okay, you want to be searchable by your name. So please use your real name. Yes, kiddo, what do you need? Please go to bed. You're fine. Please go to bed.
Becca came down here to get something cold to drink, just like you did. Good night. <laughs> so use your real name. Um, have a clean looking page. No, it's time to go to bed. Get some, get some um, ice water. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm flying solo here. So he does not get ice cream. He gets ice water. <laughs> sorry. Um, have a clean looking page. Um, that's not cluttered. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Typo. And reflects you and your brand. So, um, what I want you guys to do tonight is to look at your settings and make sure that they're set. So you have to approve tags on your page. Do you know what I mean? Okay. If you don't know what I mean, go into your security settings and, um, try to, Go in and I've got to try to figure out where it is in there, but you should be pretty easy that you have to approve tags. Okay. And why you want to do that is because when you go up north to your family's cabin and every single one of your 23 cousins is tagging you and all these pictures of you chugging beer, right? You don't need 20 of them to show up on your timeline um, and messing with your brand. And then when people find you and are friended by you and click on your page, you want them to be able to scroll through and like the first like four images they see should be you should be in control of those images they should be very clean they should not clean like what I mean when I say clean is I don't want a bunch of like shared links and like garbage that looks makes your Facebook page look cluttered I want it to be like a blog looking feed of your life does that make sense I'm having a, I'm like talking to myself guys because I can't really see you but um, give me a nod if that makes sense so you want to be able to approve what is shown on your wall not only for like appropriateness, but also just to make sure that it could be a really great post about you, but you don't need 17 posts about Super Saturday from Beachbody on your wall. If you're tagged in all those, you can go in, you can interact. They'll still show up in the news feed, but when people click on your page, you're in very much in control of how your branding appears. Okay? So um, really make sure I want you guys, when you get off this call tonight, to make sure your settings are set to approving tags and also to go into your page and click on it and be like, okay, is it, does it show, does it reflect my brand in the first like five pictures I see or five posts I see or do it, is it a bunch of garbage that's tagged from other people because that doesn't really reflect you. Okay. Make sense? I want you to be thinking of that person who gets a friend request from you and clicks on your page to see what you're all about. Okay, I'm gonna give you some don'ts. And I do not do this to be negative. If you guys know me at all, you know that I'm not like, um, like a tough lug negative Nelly, but I wanna get some things out of the way that I don't want you to be doing, okay? Please do not use stock images of Beachbody products. So many of you know that. Yes, I, um, I promoted a Lift 4 group that had Joel's picture on it because it's a brand new product that's coming out, but I tried to also integrate my own flair on it, right? Um, you don't need to be standing with your Vegas Shakeology like, and I totally did that when I started coaching. I totally did. Um, but your brand is not Beachbody. You are your brand. So really try not to use stock images of Beachbody products slapped all over your page, okay? Please do not post links to your Beachbody page. Do not put, post prices. Because again, think of that person who's coming to your page for the first time and they see all you have is a bunch of links, random before and after pictures of other people you don't know, um, sale prices for challenge packs slapped up there. What do you look like? You look like one of those spammy MLMers who's trying to sell them stuff. So that is not what you want to look like. So don't let that stuff get on your page. All pricing should, all pricing conversations should happen behind the scenes. Okay. And, um, links should all be exchanged behind the scenes too. Melissa McAllister always says link posters are liars and what she means by that is if you don't have anything to say about your product besides 
posting, slapping a link on your wall, you look like a liar. You need to know your product and be talking about it in a way that's not spammy or salesy. Good night, babe. Um, and this is kind of a weird one, and I, I know this may sound silly, but when you see like a funny meme or inspirational picture that you love, don't share it. If you really love it, save it and then reuse it as your own. When you share, you get less Facebook affinity. And again, your wall looks to start looks really busy or cluttered. Um, but if you save something that you think is really clever and you post it as yours and make it public, you will see other people start to share it. So when you see something that's like, um, Oh, geez, I screenshotted somebody's today that I thought was really good that I had big visions of using in here. I think it was Kate McDonald. She had this really clean, crisp looking image that said like, it was a, um, a Ralph Waldo Emerson quote and she posted it on her wall and um, she didn't share it from another source. She saved the image posted it as her own. Does that make sense? The only thing I would have suggested she did, and if she's on this call, she knows I'm not using this as a criticism, is there's a watermark on the bottom that somebody else's, I would cut it off. I would edit it right off, okay? So if something, if you steal or snag another image from somebody else, um, don't post something that's got someone else's watermark on it because you're essentially sending them to somebody else's page. Um, don't share it, post it as yours. Make sense? Okay. And if you see like a motivational or inspirational quote or funny meme, really think about, could I use this quote with my own self in the picture? Or um, I do post memes or inspirational like graphics that I find on like Pinterest or stuff, but um, only once in a while. Like I think on my Instagram even, I post it like every like fourth image. Um, and on Facebook, I do it very rarely because you want it to be a mix of you and then every once in a while you toss one of those in. And if you do use it, make sure that it is really, really nice quality, not grainy, not screenshotted, not with someone else's watermark on it. Okay. I don't know if I make any sense there, but brand it as yourself. Don't use someone else's brand as yours. Okay. Oh, geez. These are all right, some more don'ts, and this is all said with love, okay? Because this is all said with love as someone who's been doing this for six years, who've, who's done all these things and um, struggled with all these things too. Don't pass, post at odd times when no one's online. And then you get discouraged that you don't get traction. I have done it more times. I think I did it last week. Like I posted at like 10.30 at night, you know, like I post to a challenge group because I was up and I needed to get it out and... And then guess what happened? No one responded. Well, yeah, it was 1030 at night. What is my avatar doing? Moms, they're sleeping. Or they're certainly not like wanting to interact on Facebook with me. So um, don't get discouraged if you don't get traction. If you post at an odd time and don't get any traction, you can always delete it and repost it later. It's your Facebook page. Or ask some friends to comment on it and get in there and start engaging with your friends and commenting back and seeing if you can get it to get some traction. But um, really think about when your audience is online. Um, I notice my audience tends to be online early. They don't tend to be up real late. So that is something um, to consider. Now, if you're a millennial, your audience might be up later. But think also about your time zone. So really be thinking about what are good times to post that I could get better traction. I posted a day at 11 in the morning. It was like, Oh, maybe it was like 10, 30, 11. And I didn't get much traction at all because it's 11 in the morning. People are at work. It's not lunchtime. They're not on their phones. You know, so that was my bad. But just keep in mind, like, when am I posting? Please don't post pictures with terrible lighting or where your hand's halfway over the, you know, thing on your, the lens on your camera. Um, it's just important to think about what people are perceiving when they come to your page. You want to stop their scroll. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves 
is um, when someone will save a post from their Instagram stories. It's like grainy and not very good, like of them working out. It's got all sorts of stickers, like where they checked in, all these hashtags, and they post it on their Facebook page. Not talking about your Facebook stories, that's different. But your Facebook page should be your A game. So don't take something that you created on Snapchat or Instagram that looks like garbage and post it on your Facebook wall because it looks like garbage, okay? This one um, I, is coming from an English teacher and I absolutely love to write. Like I, I feel like my Facebook is like a mini blog for me a lot of the time. Just keep in mind that if you're using a post with a ton of text, don't do it every single time you post or you become that person that people scroll past because it's too much to read. We're in a society where people want things instant, they want things fast, they're scrolling while they pee, they don't have a ton of time to sit and read your like lengthy reflections seven times a day. So don't use a ton of text every time you post. And this is coming from a, a long poster. I know I'm a long poster. So if you're gonna have a long text, a lot of text, use white space and or bullet points. It's more appealing to the eye. Um, I took a graduate class in um, when I was getting my master's about technical writing and they talked about how much more accessible and appealing it is to the eye if you have a balance of white space and text, a balance of bullet points and text so that people can follow and they don't just get overwhelmed by this big chunk, this big paragraph that's not broken up. They're more likely to read to the end. And then if you do do a long post next time, break it up into a shorter post. Don't always be the long poster or you get overlooked because people don't want to read it all. Okay. A few more don'ts. I don't know why that yellow line is on my screen. I must have done something goofy. Okay, sorry. This is something that I, d that I didn't know until recently is that um, if you copy and paste text, Facebook knows you did that and your affinity automatically drops. So I was like, huh, that's weird. So like literally if Amanda posts something that I like and I'm like, oh, I like that. And I copy and paste it and then use it. Facebook's like, huh, it's not yours. And they don't show it to as many people. So try and, and we all do it because we're busy, but try when you can to have your text be original or at least edit it up a lot so that it's not just this copied and pasted plagiarized thing because your affinity with what who sees it drops then. Interesting, huh? So that goes with don't take, and this is just a courtesy thing, don't take other coach posts and use them as your own without giving that person a heads up. Okay, it's just rude. I have people on this call that I'm close enough with that I would never think twice about them using my post. That's fine. But if it's somebody you don't know very well on this team, I mean, I probably say something before I cut and pasted their post. This probably goes without saying, but don't put other products down or compare our products. I mean, nobody needs a comparison chart to why Shakeology is better than Advocare. They just don't. Know your product. Be the bigger person. You don't need to talk a smack about. It's one thing to say that our products aren't a quick fix. It's not a wrap. It's not a pill. It's not a protein shake. Those are all true, but you don't need to be like, oh, you Herbalife people suck. You know, not that you guys would do that. But there are people out there who do that. It's not going to help you sell your product. Don't be a negative Nelly. Don't get that. Be that. You know those people on Facebook. You guys know those people. All they ever do is complain. They make these vague posts like, no one in this world understands me. You know, and feeling discouraged. And that's like their post. Oh my God, please don't be that person. It is, nobody wants to be friends with that person. Everyone's going to keep scrolling. Um, don't just constantly complain about others, okay? Or other people, or your life, or whatever it may be. Your spouse, my gosh, like it's so bad. And remember that this is a window, Facebook is a window into your store and your brand. So even if you have a terrible day, or you are feeling super negative, don't blast it all over Facebook every two seconds with these weird, vague, 
or like terribly mean posts. You know those people. I unfollow those people. I don't have time for that. So, and then um, this is something interesting because I used to always say, don't make politics or religion part of your brand. But for some people, that is part of their brand. So I'm not going to say don't do it. I'm going to say don't do it unless you're ready for it. Okay. Um, and again, unless you can do it without being a negative Nelly, which is really hard. The, our current political climate is really um, challenging. And I definitely know Megan Kitsy Ward. She's probably not on this call, but she's a really, really good example of somebody who her politics are definitely part of her brand. And I think that she can post about it and weeds people out who aren't interested in following her. She can be pretty bold in it and it's okay. But um, just be aware that if you're going to wrap politics and religion into part of your brand, you need to be able to handle that, um, that things are going to get ugly sometimes on your page. Okay. So I used to say, don't do it. Now I, I can't necessarily say that that's true. Just be sure it's something you really want to do. Because once you do it, it's hard to take back and you will lose followers. But you might also gain followers who are your people and are your tribe. And that's not always a bad thing. All right, enough don'ts because I don't want you guys to think I'm a negative Nelly. All right, some tips for photos. Please use good lighting. It says my internet connection is unstable, guys. So if I break up, I'll be back. Use good lighting. Natural light is great. Um, Alyssa's got some beautiful natural light. I can only see like three people. I can see Alyssa, Kate, and Joss right now because of the way you guys are arranged on my screen. But um, natural lighting is great. So sometimes I'll work out in my basement in the morning and then I will come up into my living room to do my, po my sweaty selfie because the lighting up here is so much better. Okay, that's okay. Or those ring lights. I, mine's in my office, but I have a big ring light that'll clip onto my computer. I also have, um, a lot of you guys have small ring lights that'll clip right onto your phone. Um, it's key. It really does make your picture stand out. makes your picture look so much better. I'm in terrible lighting right now, I'm sure. Um, and if I had a ring light attached to my computer, I would look so much better, especially if you're going to do live video, guys, which I think is a huge and wonderful idea. Please, please, please use Good lighting and a good angle. Shalene Johnson talks a lot about um, angling down a little bit on your face so that you're not talking down or looking down on your camera and posting a photo or video up your nose. Okay, it's much more flattering if you tilt down with a natural or bright light than if you look down on your phone or a computer in the dark, okay? Play with it. We've all posted garbage photos of ourselves, but really now I want you to be mindful. Am I using good lighting? And is this a flattering angle or is it shooting up my nose? Vary your poses, your facial expressions, etc. So one thing I want you guys to do tonight is to, and I see lots and lots of people on our team do this, and I am definitely guilty of doing this. It's like every single time I post a running picture, am I posting the exact same picture basically? I mean, Again, guess what happens? People just keep scrolling because they've seen it. There's nothing scroll stopping. So the other day I posted, I was running on um, Saturday. I was running. And I stopped on the trail and I posted my selfie and posted it in my group. And then I was going to post it on my wall. And I was like, guess what? People have seen this selfie like a thousand times. It doesn't matter how many cute running quotes I put with it. It is old. So I propped my phone up. I set the timer and I did some push-ups on the trail, right? And I don't know if you guys saw, but I posted a picture of me like in a push-up position because it was just something different. Vary your poses, vary your facial expressions, vary your angles, vary your filters. Do something different because it will stop people from scrolling. So just because you take a picture for your um, Facebook group, that's the same sweaty selfie day after day. That's fine. Those people already love you. They don't care what you post. But the people on your Facebook wall would love to see some variety. And so would I. Okay. So just something to think about and make sure your lighting is good. Vary your subject matter. This is really hard. And I struggle with this so, so much. 
every day, especially now that I'm home in the summer, because I'm like, I have nothing to talk about. I feel like, like, here I am with my kids again. Here with my kids. Here's my dog. Maybe I should post about my cat because he doesn't get much love on social media. But it's like, for real, we don't do anything, I feel like. Like, here we are at another baseball game. Here we are at another splash pad. Like, it's hard. It's hard to come up with varied subject matter. But it's your job to try to do it. Um, Facebook likes kids more than Instagram does. But please don't just pictures, post pictures of your kids every day. Yes, they're cute, but that is not the only part of your brand. Okay? And we talked about this just a little bit with sharing. Memes and motivational images and quotes. Kate, I used yours today from Ralph Waldo Emerson as a good example. Cut the watermark off the bottom though, okay? Just, it would just the quick edit would just take it right off or add, and then you could add your own. But um, she did a nice job about not sharing that image, using that image and posting it as her own. So um, don't be afraid to use motivational quotes and text on your own images. Um, Rachel Niels does a really nice job of this too, um, which is probably where Kate also learned like they they've got nice pictures and fun variety in what they do. Um, don't just use stuff from Pinterest all the time. Use your funnies, funny memes and stuff sparingly and make sure they're quality images. Anything that you could incorporate that quote onto a picture of yourself or just take the image and use it is fine, but don't share it from elsewhere. Don't screenshot it and have it look like garbage. That doesn't reflect you very well. So Oh, geez. I have a lot of animation in this. I was very excited about the animation. Sorry. Photos. A little bit more. Don't use a lot of busy, busy collages. I see it a lot. I used to be terrible about this. I used a collage on Sunday, and I just used three images, and it was really hard. I had to, like, slap my hand to not put, like, seven images of my whole day on it, you know, because I get really excited. But guess what? It's so busy that nobody can see what the heck you're even posting about. Um, one exceptional photo really can just be more eye catching than 15 photos squished together. Okay. I don't need 17 images of your kids with a splash pad on one collage. It's too much, too much for the eye, but one really great picture of your kid with a splash pad could catch the scroll more so. Okay. If you do do a side by side image, or small, what I say small collage, because they do have their place, side-by-side -side image is going to be before and after, right? So sometimes you're going to do a collage. Pay whatever fee it is, I don't know, $1.99, $2, to omit the watermark in the corner that comes with the app. Uh, I see it all the time. Like if it's like PixArt or like pick play post, pick collage, pick stitch, whatever it is, get rid of it. You are your brand. You don't need to be watermarked by some $1.99 app. Just pay the whatever fee it is or find one that doesn't have that watermark. Do you know what I'm talking about, guys? Do I sound like I'm crazy? Alyssa, graphic designer, give us a thumbs up that it looks way better if you get rid of that than if you have it on the corner that says, like, pick stitch. Yes, pick collage. No. Okay, you want them to think you're big time and that someone put that together for you, you know, like, you don't need them to think that you got it off pick collage. So get rid of the watermark. It's just a pet peeve of mine. I know it's silly, but. Content. We're into the good stuff. Don't post more than three to five times a day. You can story all you want. Um, and I link my Insta stories to my Facebook stories, and I'm sure most of you guys do that too. That's like your B material, same as on Instagram. The good stuff goes on your wall. The random journey about your life, your day, goes on your story because it disappears after 24 hours, and it gives people a, you know, sneak peek into like what your life is like, what your voice sounds like, but um, it doesn't stick around forever. So um, really. On Facebook, I want you posting no more than three to five times a day. Two is fine. I wouldn't post more than five. Try to stick to the three E's when you can. That's to engage, educate, and entertain. 
So an example of an engagement post might be, um, I saw Bridget Hammond posted one today asking runners about what they run with for their music. And I, I know that she's probably just trying to get engagement, but maybe she really wants to know, and you know I'm going to get in there and give her my advice because I've got advice. People want you to be interested in them, okay? So engagement posts are huge. Ask a question. Ask for a response. Um, educate people. Recipes are great educate posts. Entertain people. I posted about me and the dog getting a dog treat and having to pay like a bajillion dollars for eye drops today or ear drops. But I posted at like 11 and I thought it was going to be like funny and people are going to love my cute dog and like nobody cared about it. So it fell flat. It was meant to be an entertain post. So um, entertain could be funny. Entertain could be cute. Entertain could be anything that just gets people to stop and read. Okay. Um, but I always think the three E's are important to think about when I'm posting. Don't only post workout, food, or business posts, or people are going to be turned off. One a day is fine. So if you post three times in the day, I really only need one of those to be fitness, food, or business related. If you turn into one of those people who's posting five times a day about Beachbody, guess what happens? You're going to lose followers. It's not attractive. Stay consistent. Stay open for business every day. When you disappear for days at a time, people notice and Facebook notices and they don't show your stuff to as many people. Yes, we all need days where we're unplugged. I'm not saying you need to have your entire life plugged in 24 seven. Okay. You go up North with your family for the weekend and you unplug great. But then when you come back, you need to plug right back in. Um, if you disappear for days at a time and the next you only post every once in a while to offer an invite to a challenge group, nobody sees it. You're not open for business all the time. So I think you really need to think about consistency in your posting. When it comes to content, I want you guys to think about your five pillars. At our Super Saturday, she called them buckets. And I really, really liked that because um, I thought about pulling content out of these buckets. Okay. Um, and what I mean by that, if you're new to this call, is Beachbody is not your brand. You should have five buckets or pillars for your brand. I'm going to call them buckets tonight that you pull from that reflect you. And please don't say fitness family, faith, food, fun, because I bet that could describe 95% of you on this call. Am I right? Yes. Okay. I'm talking about things that make you more unique than just that. So yes, family is one of my buckets, but one of my specific buckets is that I am a fam mom to a large family. I have four children. Okay. That's one of Jess Beagland's buckets. That's one of Alyssa Gibson's buckets, okay? Um, maybe one of your five pillars or buckets is that you're a military family, like Julie Smith, Jess Beagland are on here. I see them, military family. Maybe you don't have children. Maybe you're a cat mama, Kate McDonald. Or maybe you're a dog mama. One of Amanda's five buckets is that she rescues puppies. She fosters puppies. Um, one of my five buckets is that I'm a runner. That is specific, more specific than just fitness. Like, I do love fitness. Um, but maybe you're a yogi. Maybe you love to lift. Um, maybe you have a huge weight loss transformation or a weight gain transformation. Uh, maybe one of your five pillars is that it's Bethany Kelm on here that you are a peanut butter junkie. Um, maybe your five pillars are going to reflect where you're at in your life right now. Maybe you're breastfeeding or you just had a baby or you're pregnant. Um, maybe you're a cancer survivor. I want you to dig deep and to think about Megan Kitsy Ward, autism mom, right? What are things that are really personal to you? If faith is one of your pillars, awesome. But I want you to dig a little bit deeper because there's a lot of people who faith is their pillar. But what specifically could you talk about that is going to attract your audience to your brand? So when you're posting your three to five posts throughout the day, I really want you to think about those five pillars, maybe fashion 
um, Bridget Hammond, if she was on here, fashion is for sure one of her pillars. She's a lot of times giving fashion tips. I've definitely gone and bought stuff because she's told me where she got it. That's really cute. Shoes and bras and stuff like that. So I want you to think long and hard about your brand. And I don't want you to just be a generic beach body coach, just like everybody else, because you want people to like following your page because they relate to you and they're interested in the five things that make you uniquely you that you're going to use to brand yourself. Your post should be reflecting those every day. I want you to think about quality over quantity. And I've really come a long way in um, growing in that because I used to think I have to post three to five times a day. And it would be like 10 o'clock at night. And I would be like, I don't legit can't think of anything to post about. And I don't need to post just to post. That's silly. Because guess what happens? I post something that nobody cares about and then nobody sees it anyways and it gets like two likes and that's silly. So I know um, Melissa McAllister said one time to me, so what? I want you to think about that when you post. So what? What is going to make someone see that post and resonate with that? What is going to make, what about it is going to add value to their life? whether it entertains them, engages them, educates them, inspires them, makes them giggle. Um, they want to know where you got your shoes. I mean, whatever it may be. So what? If you're posting a post that is like another sweaty selfie that looks just like the one you posted yesterday, it's like workout done, you know, burned 300 calories. So what? So you and a bunch of other people were trying to sell stuff on Facebook. So I want you to think about, so what? Am I posting this just to post something? Maybe that would be better off putting your stories because it's going to disappear. Like, I just got my workout done. Yay! You know, fat hashtag, fit mom, hashtag, you know, sweaty mess. Ha Great. And people know you worked out, but it doesn't need to stick around on your wall unless it's adding value. Be interesting. But those educate posts be interesting. Tell people um, how to make cauliflower fried rice. Um, tell people how to, I don't know, get involved with sending care packages to troops overseas. I don't know. Be interesting, but also be interested. You need to be engaging with your audience. Just don't post and run. Um, post and engage. Post and ask advice. Post and ask questions. Get on other people's pages and engage with them. I heard one time said that Facebook is a peek into your living room. And I really liked that. Okay. If you could be in my living room though, right now, you might be horrified and stuff. Oh, I see on Facebook. It's like a tornado went through here. But um, it should give a well-rounded look into your life. Instagram is very me focused. Okay. Um, Facebook is very we focused. So Instagram wants more perfect selfies. That's what gets a lot of traction on there. They want me, 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 look at me. Okay. Facebook, it's more traction for authentic community. So sometimes sharing things between the two works really, really well. And sometimes it doesn't between Facebook and Instagram, which is kind of frustrating. Um, but I don't want you to make Facebook your highlight reel. Instagram is going to be more of your highlight reel. Okay. And just look at the generational difference between the two. And this is not a knock on millennials because they're amazing. And I want them to teach me about Instagram and I love them, but it is a much more me focused generation than this old lady here who um, isn't used to just sharing my highlight reel. Okay. So don't make Facebook your highlight reel. Be you the authentic be somebody that people want to connect with. Okay. Alyssa Gibson had a really great post today about um, just being a tired mom in this phase of life that is hard. And I'll post it in the, in the thread after I post this video, but um, the recording of this, but her picture was really eye catching. So it was well lit. She's pretty. 
But then her message was just about how like, it's hard. This phase of life is hard and it's exhausting and um, it's real, you know, that's authentic. And people want to connect with that. I talked a lot last week about my struggles lately with anxiety and I got a lot of personal, I got a lot of feedback on my wall, but I also got a lot of personal messages. Um, you guys, like these personal messages, it would just break your heart that I was so just humbled and honored that anybody would reach out to me. And that probably isn't going to happen the same way on Instagram. It's just a different format. Um, maybe it would, I don't know, but um, so far it hasn't. So I really want you to think about making Facebook a, a more authentic look at your life. But of course, with really great lighting, <laughs> which is so dumb, but it's true. Um, if you think something is too vulnerable, too embarrassing, or too uncomfortable to post, it's probably just exactly what you need to be posting. Okay? People are going to relate to it. And they're going to say, me too. And they're going to follow you. It is okay to post about negativity or obstacles, but try to give them a positive spin. How have you overcome? Offer value. Don't just get on there and vent. I got crazy with these animations here. Let's see. A few things I don't want you to forget. Be sure you interact with others and make them feel valued and important. Make time in your work hours to be social on social media. But do that last. Don't start your day with that or you will spend all day scrolling, okay? But yes, you want to um, interact with others, like on their pictures, comment, ask questions, be social. When you use a question, like um, we are thinking about going to Mammoth Cape, Kentucky in August. And so to start that post, that engagement post, I would say something like, Facebook friends help. Has anyone here ever been to Mammoth Cave, Kentucky? Then I would talk about what we're thinking about doing rather than asking it at the end of the post because if it's too wordy, people scroll past it. Okay, so if you want to get engagement, lead with a question, don't end with a question. That's a simple tip that really has helped me. And make sure you are ending with a call to action a lot of times that lets people know you're on a journey, they can join you. You want them to interact with you. Really with Facebook, um, Facebook affinity, the biggest consistent thing I can find with the logarithms or whatever that are constantly changing and they're super annoying is that engagement is key. The more people who engage, the more Facebook is gonna show it to people. Um, so comment and interact with everyone who comments on your post. Easier said than done. Sometimes a couple of days will go by and I'm like, oh my gosh, I never got my back and commented. So go back. Because guess what? Then it shows up in people's feeds again. So it's not a bad thing to return to a post um, and comment. But every time, even if it's you, even if it's Alyssa and I going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth in the comments, Facebook's like, oh, okay, oh, people like this post. And then they show it to more people. So um, definitely get in there and interact with your people. It's community-based, remember, right? Not just look at me, look at me, look at me-based. The more you comment, the more people see it. Use curiosity marketing. Don't just slap Beachbody lingo all over everything. Um, I saw one of my friends today is traveling abroad, and she was like, I don't go anywhere without my nutritious snacks and shakes and she had like a thousand and one like isogenics products next to her and she was like like selfie and I was like oh my gosh no don't do that that's terrible okay in her hotel room in like Thailand or wherever she is no what she should do is show a picture of her eating or drinking one of these delicious things and like a really cool background in Thailand and make people curious about what the heck she's eating. She's going to get a lot more interaction than like the two people who are like, great, see you're using your products overseas. Awesome. Because it's just a bunch of labels. Okay. So use your product, but use it in a way that's going to make people wonder what is she drinking? What is she eating? What is she talking about? 
Okay. Don't use beach body lingo because even though we all know what it is, other people don't necessarily know what it is. Get them curious and engaged. And reuse past posts. If you're someone like me, or again, I can only see like three people on here, but so I'm going to keep referencing these three people. It's not because I love them more than the rest of you. But if you are someone who's been doing this for a while, Jess Vigelin, Kate McDonald, Alyssa Gibson, you've got posts from two years ago that you can reuse. If they did really well in the past, they'll do really well again. And I would never remember that I read Jess Vigelin's post from two years ago, two years ago. I'd see it again and be like, ah, oh, that's such a great post. Gosh really resonates me with me, probably because I've seen it before. But you can use the same wording, just use different image or, um, you know, use, alter it slightly. But it's okay to reuse past posts. And the same goes for your Facebook like page, guys. You can definitely re-recycle awesome content again and again because the people who love you don't care if they've seen it before. And you should be consistently adding new people to your market. So I think it's 100% okay. Don't reinvent the wheel if someone had a really great, if you had a really great post. Look in your Facebook memories for what you did a year ago, two years ago, you know, and reuse it. Add friends every single day. Every single day. Even when you don't want to. Stick with it, guys. Running a business through social media is hard. Your feelings are going to get hurt. You will get unfriended. You will get blocked. You will have creepy people. You will have trolls. You will have people who you don't want to interact with. Am I right? Like, I'm looking at you guys. Remember, Jess, that person who was hateful towards you about your messy kitchen? Oh, my gosh. She was the worst. Like, we've all had, like, crazy, pe crazy people. Creepy people, people who told me out front, friends who told me like I had to unfollow you on Facebook because of all your fitness stuff. Okay, fine, whatever. You know, so just know that it's not for the faint of heart. When you are running your business through social media, you are inviting people into your living room in a lot of ways. And that can be hard and it can hurt and it can be frustrating and it can be angering, but it can also be really empowering because it gives you an opportunity to connect with all sorts of people you wouldn't have otherwise. And you're going to have posts that fall flat. I do like every single week. And that's okay. Just keep telling your story. Keep doing you because anyone would be lucky to follow you. Trust me, this is an amazing team. So 